Okay, sorry I'm a touch late again, I promise you. Not on purpose, just uh, Monday mornings are busy, so I've been scrambling all day, uh, trying to get caught up and ready to go here for, for Missouri. But um, uh, again, just like I said, after the game, great team victory. I thought we really played solid in all three areas this past Saturday. It was uh, very good to go get that victory. And um, now we're back on to Missouri. So a little change for us, but uh, for us in our preparation, nothing major. Um, we always try to get ahead and have our analysts doing some work to, to get ahead, but, uh, but we'll be fine. Um, looking forward to getting with our players, cleaning up the Tennessee game, watching the film, and then moving on to Missouri. So um, a team that uh, had a week off, uh, played very good last time out. Um, against LSU so um, you know we know they're getting better and better and uh, well coached football team and uh, and we expect them to uh, again be rested and uh, prepared for us they probably had a few extra days I know we all found out a little bit on Friday um, so um, but we'll get caught back up and looking forward to the challenge here again this week. All right, we're getting with questions, and we'll start with Josh Moore. Mark, how, how much does that? Uh, I mean, I know you, it's not doesn't sound like it's too big a deal, but for those guys that kind of are doing the kind of the, the behind the scenes work to, in collecting film and stuff, how how hard is that to kind of switch on the fly there for them and to get you ready for this week? Uh, from our coaching standpoint, uh, nothing major. Um, I think you know the only negative is, is we're catching two teams in a row with two weeks to prepare and get healthy and get themselves cleaned up, you know, like we all like to do during an open week. Um, but as far as us and our preparation, um, you know, it, it's not, you know, not a major deal. We get just got a little, little more work to do Saturday night and uh, Sunday than, than typical, but uh, that's okay. Um, we got all that caught back up and um, we just need to go out and have another really solid week and continue uh, to build on the good things we're doing and try to get some things cleaned up. Next to Daryl Bird. Hey, Mark. Uh, the first two weeks, zero forced turnovers and then nine interceptions the last two games. Uh, was there a conscious effort to, to take more risks to go after turnovers, or is this just a freakish result of, of playing fundamentals better? Yeah, just, just, a, just a result from, from overall team defense, to be honest with you. Good things happen when you get all 11 guys in the same position. Uh, we've been fortunate. We've had, we've we've had a lead, um, and uh, they're you know maybe a little bit more predictable pass, although not so much in the Tennessee game because th those interceptions happened early. But um, you know I think it's just guys just playing well, um, being in position, playing good up front, uh, creating some pressure, good eyes. We're playing more disciplined on the back end. Our vision has been better, and uh, we're breaking on the football. So it's been a good group effort. John Hale. Mark, can you just give us an update on Quentin's status? Obviously, he looked like he was in a lot of pain there Saturday, and he's not on the depth chart today. Yeah, Quentin will be out for a bit, but uh, nothing major, thank goodness, for him and for us. Um, I'm not sure how long that'll be, but he will be out this week. John Clay. Mark, you, you sort of answered this with uh, Daryl's question, but last week one of the players said that Coach White to, told him that after the first two weeks when you hadn't forced a turnover, that sometimes when you force that first one, they tend to come in bunches. That's obviously happened with you guys. Why Why is that? Is there a reason for that? Well, I, I'm not sure. You know, I think some of it, as I mentioned before, uh, you know, with turnovers is, is, is the, the bounce of the ball. Let's, let's be honest. Again, I've used this point before that one of my first year or two here, I think it was year one or year two, we led the country in fumbles recovered. And it wasn't because we were knocking the snot out of somebody and the ball was coming loose. It was we were fortunate with the, with the bounces. Sometimes it's that way. Um, but overall, we are playing much better defensively. There's no denying that. So when you put people in some predictable situations, whether you be ahead, whether you're ahead or whether you put them in third and longs or, you know, just predictable situations, we're playing better, but the guys are executing really well. Brad's put them in good position. Um, 
and uh, you know, fundamentally we're playing better. And you know, when all 11 guys are doing what they're supposed to do and playing extremely hard, uh, generally good things happen. Hey, Brad. Offensively, you got into a, a rhythm in the second half. Uh, what was working well, and how can you build a, a little momentum this week? Yeah, I, I really liked um, the way we played offensively, you know, in particular in the second half. In the first half, really, I, I felt like we were going to do the same thing. To be totally honest, uh, we, we got uh, – we had uh, – we, we had a miscommunication. We could – I could uh, – chuckle about it now, but I could promise you it wasn't funny at the time. Um, we had a, a miscommunication on, uh, I want to say the second play of the game with Eddie's, Eddie's glasses. He was so hyped up. He had that mask on his glasses, got all fogged up and he called, uh, he called a formation uh, wrong. He called a play wrong and, and he felt so bad, but he, he could not see his play chart. And uh, so that put us in a bad, you know, that put us in third and long early. Um, I think next possession we get the fumble. That that the the Mamba screen, the screen that we had to Josh, I felt like Josh missed the cut. If he cuts it inside, he may have scored. Uh, instead, it turned into a touchdown. And then we get two turnovers for touchdowns, which puts them on the field. And then they had a long drive. We just got a little out of kilter. Um, and then another play that, that stalled a drive was called from the middle, and our players got it uh, a little uh, confused with w the one where Terry went. Uh, Terry look, appeared to go the wrong way, but it, but again, it was because it was in the middle of the field. We we could do a better job of calling that off a hash. Um, so we kind of hurt ourselves on a couple drives early, and we didn't have many possessions. Uh, the second half, I thought when we started with a three and out, and the offense goes eleven plays and. I believe I want to say around six minutes and, and scored a touchdown uh, was very, very big. And then we come back, get another stop. We get another long drive, maybe for three and then another long drive. Uh, so we possessed the ball in the second half. And I thought we did a really nice job of being aggressive with some, some plays were there in uh, Terry and the receivers and tight ends executed it. Well, we got some big gains uh, from the pass game, which in turn created some space in the run game and uh, not let them play with the, the numbers uh, at times. And, and, uh, and we created some big plays and kept them off balance. So hopefully we'll continue to do that, keeping teams off balance with being eff efficient, both throwing and, and running. Larry Ball. Yeah, Mark, could you talk a little bit about the play of Austin Dotson and Kenneth Horsey this year? Pleased with those guys. They're both getting better. Uh, Kenneth and, and Austin, um, both um, are guys that, that we like, that, that are really about the team, and it's about how we play when they're in the game. Uh, they obviously individually want to play well, but they want the team to play well. They, they work extremely hard and uh, take on that, that, that same mentality as, uh, as the offensive line that we have this year and that we've had in the past, and uh, appreciate the work that they're putting in. Derek Terry. Hey, Mark, I noticed in the second half, a couple of those series, you had uh, Jordan Wright and J.J. Weaver on the field at the same time. Um, I hadn't noticed that yet this season. W what does that package kind of do for you guys, and is that something you might experiment with uh, a little bit more going forward? Yeah, definitely, Will. Um, you know, I thought all three of those uh, outside linebackers that played really played well. Um, you know, I thought Boogie sack early in the game was a major play in the game as well for momentum and to get them out of field goal position. So uh, I thought uh, Jamar really played a good game. And then uh, with J-Dub, with Jordan uh, playing with J.J., uh, it gives us some length and it gives us uh, the opportunity to rotate the three of them. Um, so they both did some really good things. I thought J.J. Uh, lost contain on one play early. Uh, in the in the game and and uh, kind of got after him on the sidelines and I love him he responded in such a good way and played outstanding really he played some really good football um, the rest of the game um, and JJ you saw a play with him were very similar play with J Dubs where they tried to reach him and get outside and get on the perimeter and he's so long and and a uh, big strong guy and made a tackle for loss so you know I thought the, the three of those outside backers are playing uh, really well. Aaron Gershon. 
Mark, you guys have been looking for that second receiver to step up with uh, Josh Ali, and it seemed like Alan Daly was able to do that Saturday. How happy were you uh, with his performance? I, I was really happy for, for, for him personally and uh, because the, he's been so unselfish. They've worked so hard, and he's been working hard, and the opportunities are going to be there. And we talk all the time about continuing uh, to have a strong mentality, do what's right, can continue to practice hard, play hard, and the opportunities are going to come, and what are you going to do when you get the opportunity? And, uh, and he certainly made the most of it, made some tough catches in the middle of the field, obviously the touchdown, and so happy for him, and it definitely helps us. John Blake. Mark, you mentioned your analysts earlier about doing preparation work and so forth. Uh, how valuable have those guys been to your program? And are they especially, are they even more valuable in a year like this where it's such a grind where you've got 10 SEC opponents, plus you're worrying about COVID and all those other things you have to deal with? Just how, uh, how valuable are those guys? They're extremely uh, valuable. And, um, you know, they all work extremely hard and, it's hard to single out any of them. You know, Josh Estesua has been with me for a long time on the office side of the ball, works extremely hard, works, you know, with me and gives me ideas and, and uh, individually and just all of them do a great job. And on the defensive side of the ball, you know, a guy like Greg Minuski, who's been, uh, heck, he's been in the NFL for his whole career. He uh, was a player in the NFL for a long time, was a position coach in the NFL for a long time. He's been an NFL defensive coordinator. And he just got a great uh, demeanor about him. He works so well with Brad. Uh, you know, they have such comfort together. And, um, you know, he's just a, a great person to have around. Just just his presence. I think he's just got one of those guys that, that brings that, uh, that demeanor and uh, very positive and, and confident. And uh, it's good just to have him around and in those meetings. And so all the guys have worked extremely hard and uh, fortunate to have a great staff. Josh Moore. Mark, Kelvin Joseph is a guy that, you know, I think was, was seemed like he was getting ridiculed through two weeks um, and, and, you know, had some, you know, penalties and things like that that I think contributed to people talking about him in that way. But the last two weeks is I think he's kind of looked more like the guy that, that you expected him to be and, and you know, fans expect him to be. What just – did something change there in between the Mississippi State game and the Ole Miss game or – well, I think Kelvin, you know, we, we all knew what type of talent he has. I think he was really pressing hard early. You got to remember, this is a young man that had to sit out all of last year. So, you know, you need to get some game reps. There's one thing to have practice reps underneath you, and there's another thing to have game reps under you. And I think he really wanted to play well, uh, again, for himself, for his team. And sometimes when you press too much and you try to do – things uh, beyond what your coach to do you know bad things happen that that happens all the time and again it's not for selfish reasons I'm talking I'm thinking right now about some plays that happened in this game even up front with our defensive line because they've been getting a lot of pats on the back well they start trying to do too much and jump around and jump out of gaps and that's that's not how you're going to play effective football uh, in, in any area whether it's offense defense or special teams so guys mean well uh, but sometimes when they don't do what they're coached to do, they hurt the team and they hurt themselves. And I think Kelvin let the game come to him. He had his, at that position, you're only going to have so many opportunities per game and you have to make the most of it. And he's done that the past couple of weeks. Um, he's letting the game come to him, do his job, uh, focus on what he needs to do and uh, good things are going to happen to him. And that, that goes for all of our team uh, because there's some plays that we need to get ironed out still. And we, we have some guys that, again, I, I don't think it comes from a selfish place. Uh, they want to do well for the team, but when they're, when they're doing things they're not coached to do, uh, it's not going to help anybody. Mark Story. Mark, how well do you know Eli Drinkwitz, if at all? And what are the challenges of, of um, you know, going against his offense, which, you know, he, he obviously is well regarded. And secondly, what, what are your impressions of the freshman quarterback who I think you guys recruited? Yeah. Eli, I do, I do not know personally, but what I, when I have been around him in our meetings and, and he's new to the league and everything you hear about him and you could tell just by watching him and listening to him, uh, seems like a great person and obviously a great coach, very creative, 
uh, gives you a lot of um, things to look at and uh, put some pressure on you. So um, obviously a very good coach and seems like a great guy and what I've been around him, I really enjoy uh, being around him. And um, so, you know, with playing him, it'll be, a, it'll be a real challenge, you know. And with Connor, um, he stepped in and I think gave them the spark that they needed, I think has the ability to run the offense that Eli wants to run and, and um, you know, definitely looked very good. So it uh, doesn't surprise me that Connor's playing well. We certainly knew him out of high school. He's a great player, a great person. And so uh, he did a very good job. John Hale. Mark, you talked a little bit about him after the game Saturday, but Jamin Davis seems to be one of those guys that you talk about all the time that, that developed over time, put the work in. Just how have you seen him progress over the years and especially filling in for a guy like Cash that was such an important part of your defense before? Well, it, it's a great example. Uh, the, I'll give, for instance, I don't want to name names, but there's some guys on our team right now that, that I believe will be very good players. And when that is, I'm not sure. But you just got to continue to to work and to develop and worry about yourself. In this day and age, players worry so much what people are saying about them on Twitter, you know, how they're perceived when maybe they didn't play a good game at all, but, but maybe the ball fell in their lap or something good happened and everybody's patting them on the back. And when behind the scenes, you know, it's not happening. And so – you know, I think Jamin is a great example of a guy that did not play very many quality snaps in the first two years here, but continue to work hard, have a positive attitude, do the best he could, whether he was on scout team, getting better in, in you know, uh, with the reps that he got, getting better and banking those reps. And uh, it's a great example because I have some guys on the team that, that still get frustrated, and I understand that. Um, guys want their plays, they want their own, and uh, but it's not what's best for the team. You know, uh, I like all these guys, uh, but, but you know, I guarantee them an opportunity. Um, and, and that's what they have. And some players get frustrated because they feel like they have to uh, get their snaps when they're not earned. And, um, you know, I think he's a great example of to continue – uh, to just work and do things right. And when you get that opportunity, make the most of it. So I'm really happy for Jamin. And, um, you know, he's a great example for some young players to just keep on doing what's right. And eventually you're going to get that shot. Ken Spencer? Yeah, Mark, that win against Tennessee was obviously big for, for you guys and your kids. Just how focused or how important is it to make sure that, that your kids mentally – I'm not kind of worried about the past and, and really focused on, on this week and what lies ahead. Absolutely. Most important thing. I, I, I would imagine you all could go back and look, but, but uh, I'm sure I said it every Monday, you know, to me, to, to the media and uh, to our staff and certainly to our team. It's an odd year. It's, it's really strange. It's really different. It's really hard to play 10 SEC games. And every Monday, you know, the coaches, we get back at it and get back to reality Sunday morning. We enjoy, you know, a victory for less than 24 hours, depending on what time you play. Um, but uh, you enjoy it for a few hours, and then it's back to work Sunday and hit the reset button. And for our players, they hear that from me every Monday. And, and you really have to look at it that way, whether it's a win or whether it's a loss. You got to get back to it Monday, hit the reset button. It's a whole new challenge. And, uh, you know, it's – Again, you want to you want to win that week. You got to win today, and that's that's the truth. Next is Nick Roush. Without Bohanna in, Bowie's going to get the bulk of the snaps, but also rotating in Hayes and uh, Rogers. What have you seen from those guys in particular, and in general, what showed up on the film for a lot of the true freshmen who played for the first time in the fourth quarter Saturday? Uh, we we saw some talent. But we saw some guys that need some work, to be totally honest with you. And, uh, you know, I believe these guys can help us win uh, SEC football games, but they've got to put in the work. They've got to get some things corrected. Uh, we have some talented young guys, but they need to, to really have great weeks of preparation. And there's been too many missed assignments and fundamentally not doing the right things for us to win at a high level. Again, I'm very pleased, uh, you know, with, I love 
this group. I love their attitude. I love their, their willingness to take the, the coaching and to get better. And if you do that, then good things are going to happen. And I love these, these young guys, the, the mentality that they have. But fundamentally, we've got to get better. Josh Moore. Mark, how surprised were you that, that Tennessee let go of Coach Brumbaugh today or, or yesterday, whatever it was? Did you know, I'm really disappointed to, to hear that. I caught word of that yesterday, and I wasn't sure whether that was true or not. I didn't reach out to uh, the friends that I have on that program, and, and I certainly will reach out to Jimmy, though. Jimmy, uh, uh, I do consider a friend, and, and I know him, obviously, personally for being with me and his family and uh, wish nothing but the best for him. He's a, he's a quality coach. He's a good coach, and he'll land on his feet. Uh, with no problem. I have no idea what goes on there. That's not my business. Uh, but, but at some point, uh, I will reach out to Jimmy, and that, that's uh, disappointing. Josh, you have a follow-up? Yeah, it's not related to that, but, but you talk about uh, not worrying about streaks, and I get that, and you're not putting the, the, the programs past on you guys, but you guys have a streak. Uh, against the team you're playing this week that you have been a part of? I guess, what do you make of that? Does it matter? Or does it not matter at all? See, there's a perfect example. It means absolutely nothing, right? I mean, truthfully. I mean, it, it, it means nothing. Um, we have to go win this week. So I don't even know what the streak is. Um, but, you know, this is a new staff, a new group, and – I, I have no idea what it is uh, because it, it really means nothing. All right, next is Larry Ball. Hey, Mark, could, could you go back and talk a little bit, though, with, with Quentin being out, what an opportunity this is for McCall, like what you talked about with Davis has waited for his chain. What kind of opportunity is this for Marquand to show maybe more what he could do? Um, I'm really excited for, for Marquand um, because he needs to. He needs to step up. Quite honestly, we need to put that kind of pressure on him, and he needs to put that on himself to play at the level that he's capable of. And I expect him to do that. I really do. Um, you know, what we really miss, you know, with Josh getting hurt two weeks ago, um, you know, and, and then Q getting hurt this past week, what was amazing was, and I pointed it out to our team, and, and I just want our team to realize, and certainly if I'm saying that to y'all, it, it's truly authentic. But Josh got hurt, and uh, all he was doing was worrying about his team, coaching his team, motivating his team, not sitting in the training room, you know, with a towel over his head, icing his knee, pouting about himself. The same with Quentin. He had no idea the severity of his knee injury. It, it hurt like heck. He definitely hurt some ligaments in his knee. Could have been blown out. I, he didn't know at the time. And, and all he was worried about was icing that thing on, getting on the sidelines, and coaching his team and, and motivating his team and worrying about the win. That is the championship mentality that we're looking for. And, and I love that. Um, that is what we need from, from a lot of other guys, and we have some of that. But I think that's been the difference in the past couple of weeks of, of that type of leadership and that type of motivation and uh, selfless behavior uh, from those guys. And, uh, you know, that's something that, that we want to champion. That's something that we want to continue to build on. And most of our team is that way. It's amazing. You know, that's why we work so hard to protect, um, you know, that within our program. And that's why we point it out and we talk about it and coach it. And, we, you know, we want to model that, that behavior. And there's still selfishness. And, uh, you know, it's hard. You know, that's, that's the way society is. We understand that. But we're going to continue to coach it out of it. And, you know, that pool from the top has got to be much, much greater than the drag from below. Because, uh, you know, there is some of that. And uh, we're going to continue to, to work on it and, and work on the, the, the guys at the top to, to continue to pull and elevate guys up uh, from the middle or from the bottom. And, uh, you know, I think Q is another great example of that and that leadership um, that we're going to miss. John Wong. Hey, Mark, they say in life that uh, patience is a virtue. 
and you've certainly been patient on the football field, not just within games, but how you've built the program up over the course of the years. I mean, we've all heard it brick by brick, get back to work, chop wood. What can we learn about your patients, from your patients? And uh, are you that patient in other aspects of your life? No, no, patience is, is hard to come by in my family. I, I come by it honestly from, from my father. But, uh, but no, I think it's, and uh, certainly Chantel will tell you that, 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 that I don't have great patience in my boys um, at times. But uh, I think as I get older, I'm trying harder. And, and, you know, I'm not perfect. We all know that. That's a joke. But, um, but uh, you know, I think we, we try to constantly learn um, you know, from mistakes, you know, from things you do well, and just try to do the very best you can to, to put people in a position and make adjustments, uh, alter things and, and uh, you know, and just, you know, stick to your guns on the things you firmly believe in that help build you the program. And then there's other times where you, um, you know, you have to be willing to learn and adapt and change. And uh, there's always a fine line there in uh, trying to do the very best I can to put our team in a position to win. Okay, folks, that concludes today's news conference. Coach Duke, thank you for your time. Thank you. And we will join you tomorrow after practice with our uh, offensive